Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel here today with the death letter and in this stream we will talk about the death letter some major things and later we are going to play some TDM and ranked TPP so hello everybody there I was kind of surprised by that death letter this morning but this one is kind of insane I ranking TDM this season a little bit Deagle um, not be main focusing but we want to play ranked uh, because I think that in deathmatch ranked mode we will see kind of a test for a new ranked system as they are talking about that here in the death letter as well that they want to improve it. So hello everybody, hello Baba Mugal over there on kick as well. So this um, talk will be uploaded from me later to the channel as well so that guys which come in later see my comments, the chat comments. On this important topic, this is the most important post by New State since release. No cap, guys. This death letter is the most and greatest announcement since the release of New State Mobile. No cap. Zero cap there. So let's start into it. Hello survivors, greetings from New State Dev Team. Since the launch of our service, approximately one year and ten months have come and gone. First, we would like to convey our deepest gratitude to everyone who enjoyed and supported our game during this period. Your ongoing encouragement and substantial feedback have been the driving force behind New State Mobile's growth and improvements. Growth is already an important hint, guys. They are not lying here. The game has grown. Yes, at the beginning, many, many guys downloaded it. It's did install it, uninstall it again, but since then we are permanently growing. With the latest season of TPP Europe, you needed like 8,000 points, someone said in the chat. That is crazy. Additionally, we would like to apologize sincerely for not communicating more actively with you. Thank you. Oh, we have to, I've talked to them in, in Cologne as well when I met the community managers, and that was one of the key points. So, yeah, I tried my best to convince them, guys, be more transparent. I told them your wishes as well, uh, and thanks to Adel, he has supported me there a lot. So, um, yeah, that is already uh, really nice. Please understand that our development team has consistently been taking, uh, keeping a close eye on the feedback you share with us, treating it with as much importance as in-game metrics. Through this survey, survey, we were fortunate to receive a lot of opinions from survivors all around the world. The extensive and passionate feedback exceeded our expectations. So this is relating to the last survey they have done. Um, really nice. So I'm super hyped. I'm hyped by this letter more than today's update. No cap, guys. I'm so hyped and excited. I just uh, read the, the topics. So we want to thank you once again for the level of interest and affection towards New State. And that's what they are saying here. That's what I'm telling you in all the previous months. They are listening. You may don't see any feedback about the reports, but they were listening. They fixed so many bugs and have brought some really great content to you guys. And they will even do better in the future. This dev letter we want to aim. Well, we aim to share our team's responses to the, fast frequent, uh, the most frequent concerns and feedback gathered globally, along with the details of the upcoming updates that we are able to talk about at this stage. Ooh, that means more to come. Because this is only the things where they can talk about right now. Weapon balance. We've received feedback particularly concerning the balance of the MP155 Ultima C1, M429 C2, that's the shield one, with many of you requesting that these weapons be nerfed. To be honest, our development team has been closely monitoring these two weapons for a while now, planning an overall weapon rebalancing, which is why the adjustments have taken some time. We are happy to inform you that the MP155 Ultima C1 customization has been nerfed in the September update. And the shield size of the M249 C2 customization is slated to be reduced in the upcoming October update. Additionally, we received various suggestions regarding other weapons, some of which are said to be implemented in the September and October updates. <coughs> Tommy Gun. <coughs> um, our team has been focusing on achieving balance through a set of internal standards based on diverse in-game metrics. However, in the case of weapons that only exhibit overpowered performance in specific modes or situations, it might not always be reflected in the game metrics, making your feedback immensely valuable. 
we are pleased to share with you the latest internal data on weapon balance. We hope this information will be beneficial in understanding which weapons are favored by many of our survivors in the real game. And this will show, show us the brutal truth about OP guns in the game, guys. You cannot say... Yes, Atia. You can also watch Daily Shorts. Thank you. Um, don't spoil it, please. Um, and we are on it right now. So you already can see here um, that is Gun Knockout Rankings Battle Royale period 23rd of August until this year. So that is data uh, <laughs> 21st August until this. This is the last month. This is the state of the game in Battle Royale. 11% of the knockdowns, so welcome every new PUBG mobile player, happened with an M416. What? 9.2% happened with an AKM, another AR. Dan Barrel, my favorite gun, 8%. Scar L, M6 Alpha, DP28, L85A3, MG5, UMP. There is no Tommy gun there. So, guys, if the Tommy gun is overpowered, why no one is using it? Tell me. It is quite good balanced. Um, with the reason nerfs of the uh, damage reduction over range. Gun knockout rankings in Battle Royale. Is this the full ranking? Yep, there's the M4. So, look, we zoom a little bit in. Oops, we can do like that. So we got M4 as a favorite one. All ARs, then DP, that is crazy. DP feels a little bit underrated for me, but it's still a very good one to use. 4% of the knockouts. That is crazy. Is this altogether 100%? I guess it is like that. Yeah, it seems like it is like that. Doesn't look like it is more than 100%. Then we got as next here. There's an Alpha. M249. And there is the Tommy Gun. That is position 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So the 12th position is in the favor of Tommy Gun with 2.51% of the knockdowns. That is nice. M416, I cannot believe that the most knockdowns in Battle Royale happened with that gun. At tournaments, this is getting played by far not the most they are. That is crazy. Uh, followed directly here by the M24. Sniper. So more sniper knockdowns than... The first DMR. M24 is your favorite sniper. Nice. UMP was meta in PUBG Mobile, so could be PUBG Mobile players using it here too. Oh, that is a good point, Baba Mughal. We already said that M416 was used by PUBG Mobile players. The same counts there for um, the UMP. That's this high rate, well, that high usage is caused by a lot of players switching over recently. That is, that is nice to see, guys, but look at these percentages. That shows us how good, it is not perfect, it will never be perfect, but how good the weapon balancing is done by Crafton for New State. This is the blatant truth. This is how it is. There is no gun OP being there 20%. M416, you, you would call it OP even if it has 11%. I would not call it OP, never, I would. AKM, second most picked weapon, still a very good one, barrel there. And for sure, one, one, one hint here, why are the ARs so good? They are so good because they are used in different setups. Some guys using AR with DMR or sniper rifle. Then the AR is for close up to mid range used. And upper that, the DMR or the sniper rifle. But some other guys are using for the close range an SMG. Some even uh, MG5. Bison, DP, whatever, together with an AR. Then you have for the mid and long range the AR. Both combined have an AR. That's why the ARs have the most potential to get the knockdowns as ARs are carried by most of the users in one of the two weapon slots. And that also, and pistols are really bad here, we can see here the pistols on the lower positions as well as the crossbow. Um, yeah, that is a simple reason. Furthermore, another note here, airdrop guns like AWM, P90, AUK are for sure causing less knockdowns because they are rare and hard to get. If you would clean up that, uh, they 
from the just from the rating of the weapons, the crows are and the other ones are super good to use. So yeah, but Mughal says it, ARs are most uh, reliable. That is that is true. That's why most of the guys or most of the players have at least one AR in the in the in the backpack. Huh? So also some crazy combinations of an uh, seven mm AR with an M16. Huh? It also happens. So that is already a nice picture and very nice information, guys. Gun knockout rankings, deathmatch. Deathmatch? I would have thought, okay, deathmatch, Tommy Gun, M MG5. Well, M416. 16%? Whoa! Followed by the barrel. No one, almost no one is playing the AKM there. That is so crazy, the difference between BR and deathmatch. Vector, close range, nice. M24 DSR, because we have those long-ranged uh, deathmatch modes. That is the truth. Uh, that's why the, the sniper rifles are here. That is nice to see that sniper rifles being used. Um, very interesting. And if you look here, inside of these deathmatch statistics, and zoom in, Tommy Gun is there on a better position, but only causes 4% of the knockdowns. Uh, then Ultima was not too good here. But this is a um, little bit sad about this statistic is, statistic is that this is um, all about deathmatch. Like, for example, if you would go for uh, TDM on the train station, there for sure Ultima, uh, Tommy Gun are much better to use than on the big round deathmatch or on uh, Dead Rock. That is for sure the case. C1, C2 customization proportion. All right, as M416 is the most used gun or most causing death gun, that's why it is on the first position, it's quite even. Can we see something? Yeah, it's C2, pretty uh, C1 pretty often being more in the favor. MG5 has only one. M249 C2, for sure. SKS C2, my favorite there as well. And we got there M24 C1, more preferred. Hey, we are preferring the M24C2 by far as a team advantage. Barrel is also 50-50. Very nice. Another really nice point. This is awesome. This is awesome. Hello, Risto. Let me just open the chat again. That's much I'm playing M4 and Barrel. Nice. Thank you for the, for the info. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, keep on talking about this. If you have any suggestions, any information, just let it let me know that because this this is the most important document for new state in existence, really. And I'm so thankful that they did do that. Really happy about it. Implementation of PC PUBG items. Let's go. With the September update, we are intro uh, we introduced the new MP9, but we are fully aware that our survivors are still eagerly anticipating the addition of more weapons and new items. Especially new items, guys. This gives us a complete new perspective. Poison gas. All, um, all those customizations is insane. We are excited to give you a sneak peek of the PC PUBG items that are already confirmed for development and will be unveiled to all survivors in the near future. Ooh. Farmers, Dragunov, and what is this? Blue Zone Grenade. Oh my god, guys. This is so exciting. You know how uh, the Dragonov is shredding at uh, PUBG Battlegrounds at the moment? And we also get the Farmers. This is so awesome. I have to, I have to write Vecchi Checky and say, hey, they, they are bringing the PUBG items. Come play with me some, some new state. <laughs> we believe that PUBG fans will immediately recognize these. The AR Firearms Farmers, the DMR Firearm Dragonov, and the throwable weapon Blue Zone Grenade will be added to the game in a future update. Beside these PC PUBG items, it's very likely that more new state original elements such as customization options will be added to these legacy web weapons. So we will see the weapons from PUBG PC, which I'm super excited for. Dragunov, that is such a legendary weapon. I'm so excited for that, guys. They will add it and we will see customization for it. That is, that is really nice. But this is only is a little we are not even halfway through the page you can see it they're coming more better things PUBG payload mod nice uh, all right 
And uh, we have also in PUBG PC the, the, the rocket launcher, for example. We saw that in the trailer Fall of Troy, where that guy did shoot a um, rocket launcher defending against the hunters. The deployment of PC PUBG maps. And I was surprised that they are covering this topic. Hey, Shane Yates, welcome, brother. Hello, everybody there on YouTube. Don't forget to smash the like button. We will game later as well. But this is so important. I thought I will um, I will record it here on stream. And they will straight upload it afterwards um, so that the guys which are not here in the live stream will also be able to see that uh, video. And don't have to look a full seven-hour stream or how long I'm streaming today. We have received numerous requests from our survivors for creating and adding original PUBG PC maps, like Vikendi, Miramar and Sanok. Before we delve further, we would like to apologize to all our survivors for not being able to fulfill your initial prom our, our initial promise of alternately adding new state original maps and PC PUBG maps since the launch. In fact, the process of porting a PC PUBG maps is an extreme, uh, enormously extensive job. Virtually no different from developing new maps from the scratch. Guys, that is what I have told you. If you want to port a map from PC to mobile or you want to refresh, for example, a Rangel in the style of 2051, this is almost the same effort as if you would develop a new map. Mm, furthermore, while it might be a common concern to other Battle Royale games as well, New State is currently facing a situation where the matchmaking concentration on specific maps is intensifying, making improvements to matchmaking more urgent than adding new maps. That is right. Even in the case of Lagna, despite receiving high praise from many of you and having a high level of satisfac satisfaction, Within our development team, the reality is that this preference in map selection is gradually decreasing due to the issue with the matchmaking pool. That's what we have seen. That's what we have seen um, before. It was harder to find a match on um, Lagna. We promise that if the matchmaking environment improves to a point where the addition of large BR maps will not cause any issues, we will resume the efforts to port PC maps. In the meantime, we intend to focus more on strengthening the core aspects rather than adding additional PC maps. We kindly ask for your understanding. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Stormy, they haven't discussed about esports, but I can see that in 2024 news they will definitely come back. Uh, truth brought up thing, you're right. Esport is not covered. That was the thing I saw as well. But... Um, Let's let us go through the document, and at the end I will say one, two, three things for eSport. And this document makes it for me logical why we don't have eSport at the moment. I'm not sure, guys. In the past, for example, Counter Strike was one of those games when there was Counter Strike 1.6 a very long time ago. Then we had um, Counter Strike Source. And then Counter-Strike Global Offensive. 1.6 was really famous, being one of the first shooter games featured on LAN parties all over the world, big prize pool tournaments. And then there was um, the next generation released, Counter-Strike Source. For sure, they tried to adapt that, eSport, and, and, and. But the game was not ready back in the days. And a lot of guys said uh, the game is not uh, ready for eSports. That was the sentence when I was younger, at every game, that game is not eSport ready. This throw it in the in the in the in the trash. This is this is just throw it away. This was a common sentence for games not doing good, even they were almost eSport ready. And then they have rolled out Counter Strike Global Offensive, and everybody was like, "This is not eSport ready. This is not eSport ready." And what did happen? There have been for sure some major updates over the years, but it was not that it was not eSport ready. They had slightly changes there also in the early stage of the game, but there have not been that many updates. It was already eSport ready. At New State, it's a little bit different. Um, because we have so many new things, especially with the drone credits, I can 100% say at the beginning when it was released, it was not eSport ready. We could have played eSport, indeed. Yeah, we could have done that. Um, but I think that would have been not too good. 
And with these changes they are describing here, I hope that they get really um, yeah, satisfied by their, by their work. And then they say to themselves, hey, now we are ready for esports. This is just my personal guess. This is no official information, but how I read this document, now for me it is logical why we don't have eSport yet. They talked about meta. Meta is so important. You have to have a good meta. That's, that's all what they take care about here. You have to make sure to have a fair meta in the game to have a very good showcase at eSport and have a fair gameplay advantage. Because... For example, if um, there would be an airdrop gun, that airdrop gun would be overpowered, everybody would use it. In fact, the team which can use it would win the game. Let's just be drastic like that. This would be the absolute overpowered meta gun. But this would be not too fair, as not every team has the same chance to get to that gun, because the airdrop spawns randomly. Um, on the other side, everybody can push the airdrop, so that would be kind of fair. But honestly, if there is such an overpowered gun, a full tournament feels not like it feels not fair if not every player has can choose his loadout and still be winnable or can win the game with that. And what we can see here with all those different weapons being used, that tells me we have a very good meta, and we saw it at the last tournament that you have 64 players and like 30 different weapon loadouts, even more maybe. It will definitely bring something new in second anniversary. Hope so, hopefully. So, um, then also, new maps. Talking about pub PC PUBG maps. That is, that is all really, really, really good. Improving matchmaking conditions. That is also very good. Improving the matchmaking conditions. Is one of the most urgent issues that our development team is monitoring daily. Regarding matchmaking, there have been two primary suggestions. One suggestion resolves the matchmaking pool issue through forced random map matchmaking. And the other option revol uh, revolves around the map rotation matchmaking method. Map rotation is that what we have at PUBG PC. Then you cannot play every day a rangel. No, you have a rotation there. However, several negative opinions about these fixes need to be considered first when it comes to introducing random map selection. Guys, I know... A lot of you guys will get mad if it would be random map selection for ranked mode. I personally would love that. Make it completely random if you want to play ranked. You cannot choose any map. You have to take what the game gives you. Because at the end of the day it is important that the guy being the first on the leaderboard is one of the best players. It will not be that like. But with the current system. If you look at Counter-Strike, there is a skill-based matchmaking, so not the guy who plays the most time is on the first position. No, the guy which plays a lot and is really good and wins the most games. Because there you have a different uh, metric or a different algorithm determining the points you receive. When we are uh, at the game, we get a kill amount, we win the game, we get a certain amount of points. Like when we were yesterday master, we got 28 points for winning on Akinta or 25 with a max amount of kill points. And that is not looking against which enemies we are playing. That is a major thing at Counter-Strike. It is easier because 5 versus 5 and here we have like 30, 40 players against each other. But if the calculation is based on the opponent's strength and if you play against higher ranked players you are getting more points. If you lose against lower ranked players you lose more points. That is a nice matchmaking system, and guess what's happening at Deathmatch? They already mentioned you will get more points if you win against better players. So improving matchmaking is what we already can see with the implementation of ranked Deathmatch today. And no cap guys, this is really important. And at the end of the day, we won't see the same guys on the scoreboard again. Not the guys with the most time will be there. If they would ever implement that for Battle Royale, this, it would be a skill-based matchmaking, not a time-based right now. They also think they are also not thinking about esports because they haven't demoted there. What do you think? No. They want to make the game really excellent before getting into esports. That's how I read the document. So, 
Matchmaking is a really important thing in for eSports as well. Because if you have no good in-game matchmaking, you need maybe a third party, face it, for, for Counter-Strike. Because there is a higher skill needed to be there on the top. That's why a lot played it. Um, or you're playing scrims. There is no ranking, so it can be a little bit annoying sometimes as well. But that is what we can see at mobile games where you don't have a proper ranking system. Most pro players do not really care if they get Conqueror. Especially in the in the first and second season. This happened to Newstay by far. Really heavy. As you can see from the data above, 78 of the survivors prefer single map, match map matching over multiple map matching. Despite the application of tier score bonuses when selecting multiple maps, there is a strong player tendency to select a specific map at matchmaking. That's what we are doing most of the time as well. Sometimes you apply all four and then we are like, oh, let's go Rangel. Or we are, oh, let's go Lakna. Uh, warm up, let's go for Akinta. Implementing forced random matching could lead to problems where players will leave the starting island until they get the map they want, causing distress to the other innocent users. Additionally, many survivors consistently play on specific maps like Erangel, making this a very delicate issue that requires careful consideration. The same issue applies to the map rotation system as well. Currently, the development team is considering various methods to improve the matching system, including fixed random map matching for contender tier and above, that is nice. And rotation systems based on days and times. We will convey detailed information through updates as decisions are made. And that is a good thing. And that is a thing which I love to see already. Some changes if you are a contender or higher. Because then you already play the game quite a lot. You don't need the bots anymore. Showing you how the game is played. And making you some happy moments to get some kills when you start the game. That's why we need bots. Otherwise, gaining new players is super hard if they get killed by Conquerors in the first matches. And seeing there are some map-specific changes, that would be also nice. Revival of the Extreme Mode! Let's go, guys! Oh. I have not played Extreme that much, but I'm hyped. Because you, I know exactly that you guys want this back. I think Tommy Gunn uses increases this season, C1 scope slot and C2 ammo increase. Yeah, yeah, that will increase, Satya. That's what I said. Um, by the way, yeah, they, they, are, they are not nerfing the Tommy Gun. And the data shows us it does not have to be nerfed. Tommy Gun is a gun you find almost in every building and it was still not used in a high frequency. And now they make it even a little bit better. It will be more used and maybe further adjustments to damage or whatever will be done in the future. Uh, through the recent survey, we received an overwhelming number of requests for the return of Extreme Mode. And guys, this is... I can tell you the simple answer. It is a mobile game. Mobile games tend to have shorter map dura match durations. That is, that is the time. That is the mobile games. You don't have that much time, like on PC, when you... Okay, I go to my PC now playing around. No, this is... Ah, oh, pick out the mobile phone in the tram or whatever. Okay, let's play a fast round of Clash Royale. Done in three minutes. Sometimes a little bit longer. Oh no, I have to play New State or PUBG Mobile. Oh no, Erangel, 30 minutes. I don't have time for that. That is the case about the casual player. At the time of its closure, Extreme Mode was failing behind the matchmaking pool compared to the original BR mode. And we decided to close it, believing that the fast paced BR demand was satisfied with Akinta and Lakna. However, even back then, the development team felt regret about having to forfeit the unique enjoyment that only Extreme Mode could offer. And that is, that is the case. I'm very glad they are listening to our feedback. You do everything they are doing listening. I, I, I mean, most of the internal things I'm not allowed to talk about, but that's what I'm telling you already over the, over the last months during the streams. They are listening to the feedback. When I was at Cologne at the uh, PUBG event, I talked to the community managers. And I can tell you, they listen to us. They, they listen to us. And when we were talking about the game, you don't know how, how positive the aura of the, the community managers were. It was that, and that's kind of satisfied me, because if they are to talking so chilled and calm, we are listening. We, have, we are listening. And 
They convinced me with that. That was, that was such a great feeling. And now we got it here. And we saw it at the updates. Not everybody saw it. But at the recent updates, since over a year, they are listening to the feedback. We got now bigger Akinta is the main thing. We get a very good weapon balancing. We got some nerfs, some buffs. We got um, yeah further things they are improving. And they felt a little bit sorry or they felt regret that they have closed extreme mode. They just did not, they were not aware that this had such a high impact. Hey, Shadow over there on uh, kick. Thanks to the numerous suggestions we received, we are considering reopening the extreme mode. It would potentially be in a format such as, ti as time limit openings to avoid affecting the matchmaking pool of other maps. However, there are aspects that need to be adjusted based on the current balance standards. So we kindly ask for your patience. Perfect. Then, addition of new modes. One thing you guys are asking, like everybody, uh, every update. When, when are we getting modes? TS is by mode. Time spent. Okay, we have short the uh, round durations in deathmatch. But battle royale 75%. So, not many are playing Deathmatch. And even less guys were playing lately. Bounty Royale. I think Bounty Royale, if they have let the old mode with the old um, rewards, it would have been higher. As you can see from the graph above, the current content usage in New State is quite dismal. With the original BR at 75%, Deathmatch at 90%, and the remaining other modes at a merge 7%. Regrettably, the Bounty Royale, which we hope would become a major pillar of content alongside the original BR, couldn't stand out and will be closed in this update. And this is closed. That is closed. We may see it again, but closed is closed for now. Through the failure of the Bounty Royale, the development team realized that even if we provide more competitive modes for skilled players, it ends up being neglected by the general player base. And that's what I say. You cannot develop a game just for the pros, just for the eSport. Not regarding bounty, but um, if it would be first person. First person is harder to play because most casual players are used to TPP. That is, that is, the, that is the true fact. It is easier. And if you look at the player amount, we have like, I don't know, just random number, 4-5% pro players and the rest casual players i don't know the numbers about it if we even go for 10 percent pro players we have still 90 percent pro players who want to have an easy chill game have some nice time with their friends leading to a shortage in the matchmaking pool and ultimately making it unsustainable for long-term operation additionally this survey revealed a significant demand for new modes that offer a variety and a casual experience that is what i just said casual that is, casual players are the guys who are paying the service at the end of the day, because they are more percentage-wise. In fact, the development team is currently working on the pro players for sure, if they spend money, pay them as well, but there are just so many more casual players. In fact, the development team is currently working on a new BR mode, ooh, set to be unveiled in the early updates of next year. Let's go, that is so nice. This new mode, staged on a new BR map. Oh, new mode, new map, what's going on? Promise is as uh, promise a casual yet deeply enjoyable experience. That sounds so good, because we love casual things, not hard-focusing hot drops. Eclipsing, bounty royale in scale and novelty. Whoa, whoa. I have to translate the eclipsing. What do they mean with that? It's it's just better in the new factor and the uh, all around. Oh my god! And bounty was all guys. Bounty was already crazy when it was released. That is crazy. So excited already. Oh, uh, eclipsing. Yeah, we are dedicating our efforts to developing a mode that can offer even more fun in the future. I'm so hyped by that. More details about the new mode will be revealed in the second anniversary death letter scheduled for November. So we will see another death letter.
We will definitely look at it in, on stream, guys. While we are concentrating development resources on the new mode, we sincerely apologize for the reduced volume in live updates. That what we have seen the past weeks. You all saw that, that there is a little bit, that there are smaller updates than before. We ask for your understanding and assure you that we are working hard to enhance the survivor pass and various events rewards to alleviate any disappointment you may have until the major update early next year. Some improvements to, to, battle, uh, to the survival pass would be nice. Then, enhancing measures against cheaters. Let's go. That is the most... Ah, this is not... This, these are all banger points. No cap that, guys. This is so, so good. Hello, Kuchen. Welcome back, my friend. How are you doing? Long time not seen. Hope you're doing good, brother. In response to user violating the rules of conduct, we intend to elaborate on the three main issues that most of you have brought to our attention through your survey feedback. Harsher punishment for cheaters. Many of you have pointed out that the currently penalty for cheaters is too short, allowing them to reconnect in a short time. Reflecting on this feedback, we intend to enhance the rule of conduct and increase the intensity of sanctions. For instance, we are considering enhancing the penalty period for abnormal teaming and team killing, extending it from a maximum of 30 days to a permanent ban. Teaming is a heavy issue for solo. Second, lobby reporting and introduction of Deathcam. With the September update, we have made improvements to allow reporting through the user profile menu, even when not engaged in a game. This revision facilitates, facilitates yeah, easier and quicker reporting of inappropriate chat messages or observed unfair practices during the game. We urge you to file reports using the button at the top right of the profile when necessary. All received reports will be thoroughly reviewed and appropriate actions will be taken according to our policy. There was a guy promoting cheats in the, soft, in the, in the, in the chat. We couldn't report him. Nothing could happen. I did Collected now with also some other Ace Code partners. We reported it, that account got banned and he couldn't spam like that anymore. Some inappropriate names. We have seen some stream snipers using inappropriate names. We will for sure report them then in the future. I'm sick at home, that's why I'm here and have time to watch you. Okay, that's good. That's, that, that, is, that is nice that you are here. Um, Take care, and I hope you get better uh, very soon. And soon we will play, and you can actually see some gameplay. So feel, feel Hackerskuchen. Hey, Union Crane. Furthermore, we are excited to announce that the much-anticipated Deathcam feature is expected to be introduced soon. The development team believes that this new addition will not only assist in reporting unfair practices and facilitate gameplay analysis, but also significantly enhance the overall transparency of the game. We are tirelessly working on perfection this feature, and we kindly ask for your patience. So we will see a death cam. Hello, ape god over there. Death cam is coming. This is so good. Anti-cheat measures. Uh, by the way, guys, today or last night, another cheater from the recent Ace League got banned. That makes it to five banned accounts from the finals weekend only. And that were almost... All the hackers we have seen there. Very nice. Rather than addressing the various questions you have raised about anti-cheat measures in this dev letter, we plan to provide detailed guidance through separate content. We ask for your understanding as we intend to reveal detailed plans and the current status in the near future. New state is committed to continuously and firmly responding to all forms of cheating to maintain a fair and healthy gaming environment. Please stay tuned. So they are they are improving it. They don't want to tell you because then Cheat developers can adapt their systems. As we wrap up this dev letter, we regret that we could have couldn't dive into every issue and concern as thoroughly as we would have liked. To touch upon a few more points that we are able to share at this moment, we are planning various changes and improvements, including the addition of weather features, enhancement to lobby delays and crashes, network improvements, which go beyond the subject covered above. The development team will continuously strive to provide you with enjoyable experiences tirelessly working towards the growth and development of New State. We are committed to giving our utmost, uh, utmost uh, build and shape the future of New State hand in hand with all of you. Furthermore, to send our appreciation to all the survivors, we've prepared a surprise coupon. We kindly encourage you to use the coupon before it expires. Check out the shorts, it's NSDev Letter, 10 chicken medals, almost one week to use it. 
Guys, this is definitely the best news we could get for New State Mobile. Some hearts in the chat for New State, definitely. That is, that, is, that is so good. So that's it about the dev letter. I've told you now my expectations, my uh, knowledge and my internals and as well as my, my, my hopes for the game. Now it's your turn. Write it down below in the comment section. If you have a very urgent point they should look at as well, write it also down below in the comment section. I will forward it. That's it with today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. We will see us again pretty soon.